there's increasing diversification of what a lot of Chinese firms and Chinese entrepreneurs and state-owned enterprises are engaged in the sectors they're engaged in across Africa. Secondly is um, we also have to be mindful when we talk about China. Uh, I, I think there's a tendency to just as you, you know, everything comes from the Chinese government and that is not necessarily the case. There's this very interesting taxonomy done by a scholar, uh, um, I think Li is her surname, uh, on Zambia. So her taxonomy is that, you know, the, the, there's a hierarchy of at least three levels of Chinese actors in Africa. At the top hierarchy you have, or at the top level you have, um, uh, like, the, the national state-owned enterprises and the policy banks like the China Exim Bank and so on. At the uh, second level, you have the regional and provincial state-owned enterprises. And at the, the bottom uh, tier, you have uh, entrepreneur, like small enterprises, family-run businesses and so on. So really, when we talk about China, it's important to have this at the back of our mind that we are probably talking about different kinds of stakeholders just because you see uh, a, a, someone who looks Chinese or Asian in an African country doesn't necessarily mean they work for the Chinese government or they represent the interests of the government and that would inform their engagement with their own um, with the, the, the immediate locality they're involved with. With the fiscal crises that a lot of resource-rich countries are going through right now. We've seen or we're seeing the prominence of these multilateral and bilateral um, actors in Africa. The IMF, the World Bank, you have Ghana obtaining a, an IMF loan of I think about one billion dollars. Nigeria trying to negotiate a World Bank loan of around $3.5 billion to fund the budget. So increasingly you have these actors operating side by side, sometimes cooperating as well. So those are, in a sense, three things that are, that are quite evident in emerging China or dynamic and evolving China-Africa relations. Within the context of current realities of a globalized world, I think it's probably limiting to just focus on African solutions to African problems because the reality is many parts of the world, certainly African economies are integrated into the global economy. The focus really should be on getting useful solutions that work, discarding, discarding uh, approaches or initiatives that are not working. That, that's a bit broad and generic but I guess that's a starting point for those kinds of discussions in the context of a highly uh, connected uh, global economy of today.